it's Marla Martinson, and you are watching another episode of Conversations with Cupid. And I've got Brenda Crozier again with me. Hey, Brenda. How are you? Hi, thank you for having me again. I'm so excited. And today you're in front of your beautiful herbal cabinet. There, yep. This is my herbal and my medicinal cabinet, my, my magical cabinet. I use it for herbs for medicinal and magical purposes. And I keep it in my kitchen because there's always magic in the kitchen. I love it, I love it. Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today, everybody. If you're interested in herbs, herbs from your garden, um, this is the show for you. So. I always, I always wanna say this though, as much as herbs are an amazing medicinal use, always consult your doctor. If you are on any kind of prescription drugs, always consult your doctor first. Oh, okay. Good. Well, that's yeah, a good a good disclaimer say. there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, how did you get into the herbs and what where's your I, knowledge from? I my psychologist from Penn Foster online. I got two degrees from Penn Foster, the Advanced Herbal Studies plus the Herbal degree. Okay. I have been interested in herbs since I have developed MS over about 15 years ago, and they are always saying how certain herbs really help for MS, really help for, you know, the symptoms, and that's when I started getting interested in it, and, and the properties of what herbs can do for you. Because, and, ha and have you noticed that it has helped with your MS? Yeah. yeah. There are so many prescription drugs, and I'm so not telling people to come off their prescription drugs. I'm not a doctor. But with prescription drugs comes prescription side effects. Mm -hmm. And so many times the herbs do not have any side effects. If you have a headache, if you have an upset stomach, you know, things like that. I mean, if you're on prescription drugs for like severe diseases, you know, absolutely consult your doctor before you switch off of your prescriptions to come on to this. But at the same time, herbs do so much and the benefits are just unbelievable. Yeah, I use valerian, you know, to help me sleep at night. I'll have a valerian tea or take a capsule. You can also oh. use St. John's wort. Okay. St. John's wort, you can find right on the side of the road. It is a yellow flower, but always consult. Now, I have, wherever I go, I take this book, The Backyard Medicine. Okay. Yeah, they call these field guides. They call these herbal field guides. You don't have to use this book. There are many books that you can use to find out exactly what, if you see a flower, if you see a herb, something that you're questioning and you see it in like the woods, you're taking a walk, whatever, check the field guide. They also now have apps on your cell phone that you can use. That's you just fantastic. Herb, and, oh my God. And you take yeah. a picture of the herb and it'll figure it out. <gasps> and it tells you it, it could be this, this, and you look and whatever matches it, that's what it is. So you know. And it will also tell you the properties of what that herb or that plant does. It's awesome. That, so St. John's wort, you were saying about valerian. St. John's wort is a calming herb. It is an herb to relax you if you feel irritated, really angry. St. John's wort is awesome. I actually wildcrafted this okay. from the other town, from the woods in the other town. Um, it helps you sleep. This Isn't is that good for depression too? If people have depression, yeah. Now, but what is okay? Gonna, okay. If you're going to take that for depression, though, do not take any other antidepressant. Or if you are on an antidepressant, talk to your doctor because they can counteract. Now, what is the term? Because you use some terms people might not understand. Wildcraft. I love that. Wildcrafting is when you take the herbs from a wild, from nature, okay. from nature. Okay. Not it's not necessarily wild crafting isn't like if you have a garden and you're taking it from there. Wild crafting is if you're in the woods, if you see something on the side of the road and you happen to notice what that herb is and you take and with permission you take those herbs and you wild craft them for what you need. 
It's so funny because I'm a big juicer. I have a ju you know, I do my green juice every oh, day yeah. and I add um uh dandelion dandelion uh, greens are excellent. Now, I was I live in Los Angeles in the San Fernando Valley, so I can't really do much wild crafting, but I walk my dog in the neighborhood and a lot of people here really don't take care of their yards and there'll be weeds just growing and and this one in front of this one house on the other side of the sidewalk, there's tons of dandelions and dandelion greens and I thought I'd love to go pick those cuz they can be expensive buying them at the store but yeah, but then are. you get nervous just picking some stuff off the side of the sidewalk in the, in a neighborhood you got to wash them pretty good I imagine <laughs> well, you have to be careful that whatever wherever you are wild crafting that they haven't used pesticides right they usually have now here in Connecticut I don't know how they do it in California but here in Connecticut they will put these little tags saying we have to use pesticides oh. on our ground or we use oh. pesticides on the road or whatever. Right. Do not touch those herbs. You can't use them for culinary or anything okay. because they have the chemicals. But if you notice that it's someplace, and especially with dandelions, you pretty much know if it's, if it's a plethora of dandelions, they haven't used any chemicals. Right. So you can not only use just the leaves and make salads and stuff, you can use the flowers and make drinks. You can make tinctures. What they call tinctures is you take like vodka or something like that and you will put the, the herb in it, leave it for about six weeks, take out the herb and then use that like a dropper or two a day mm -hmm. to help your body with blood purifying, with your liver, kidneys. You can also do what they call concoctions, which is you take water infusions, you take water and you put the dandelion leaves and the flowers in it, and you drink that. Oh. As like you said, the juicing, that's what you do. You would drink it. And it's just awesome. Herbs have so many health benefits to them. Now I did a uh, net, uh, the net, the stinging nettle is, is great, the stinging nettle. And I, I have... Um, here, yep, I've got that here. Because I saw a video, I, I saw a video that jo Joanna DeVoe did with Susan Weed, and she's. T oh, I love Susan Weed and yeah, Joanna. Yeah, wasn't she interesting? She the had the, the, I think she calls, did she call them the infusions? I forgot what she calls them, but you 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 take the stinging nettle, the loose uh, leaves, and then you boil it. You know, put a boiling yeah, water on it, and then you put it in the in the fridge for for. Um, you, anyway, there's a whole thing on how to do it. It's yeah. very easy. It's just that's basically making tea and keeping it in the yeah. fridge and then drinking it. Yeah, that's what they call infusion. Susan infusion. lives by them. She lives by them. She loves her infusions. And she has made so many of them. I use nettle. I will make stews, soups, um, sauces, things like that. You know, people don't realize, I mean, a lot of witches, especially if you're in the witch community, pagan community, they will use their herbs for magical purposes, which is great. Mm -hmm. But you don't realize the medical and medicinal benefits that go with them, too. That's why I keep my cabinet in the kitchen, because, I mean, cooking is magic, too. And when you're cooking with herbs, you're doing something healthy for your family. Mm -hmm. You're doing something healthy for you. And they just taste awesome. Nettles, they're a pain in the butt to pick because they have that singing on them. I wouldn't eat nettles raw because of the little stinger things they have on them. Mm -hmm. But if you cook them, that goes away. They're awesome. Mm -hmm. they're I ordered awesome. it like a loose leaf tea, like that that way. Yeah. And I think that's good for arthritis, isn't it? The nettle is. It is. Yeah. It is. It's good for joints, good for joints. things like that. It's just great. I've had uh, this hand just burning with arthritis. This one lately. Uh, just this, so I've got to start drinking more nettle tea, I think. You can make ointments as well. You can make ointments and gels using glycerin and uh, beeswax and the herbs. Um, there's another one, calendula, is very good if you have a rash, mm -hmm. if you have psoriasis. It's also good for making teas and for eating as well. But if you have a rash or anything like that, there's chickpea, there's nettle sweet, there's Plantain. Now it's not the herb. It's not the banana. Plantain. You here in Connecticut, you find it all over the ground. You find it on sidewalks. You find it everywhere, and you can use that if you get a bee sting, mm -hmm. or if you end up with a rash and you're taking a walk in the woods, whatever. You can chew on it and put it on the bee sting, or put it on the mosquito bite, whatever. Takes the sting and the pain right away. That's Takes fascinating. 
Yeah. Now, what about, we were talking about uh, people who have these addictions to diet drinks, and, and it's just wrecking habit yes. on the body, the aspartame and all of that. Um, talk a little bit about how dangerous that is and what somebody could do to maybe get off it and use some herbal remedies instead or infusions or something. I'm bringing this to all of you people out there. Take any bottles of soda you have with aspartame, dump it in the sink. It is poison. I know it's not legally called a poison. It is poison. It is so horrible. Why they haven't banned aspartame, I don't know. It, I have multiple sclerosis. I know I talk about this on my own channel. When I drink aspartame, I can't walk. I can't move my arms. They get very weak. I get lethargic. I get very fatigued. But it's not just for people that have autoimmune diseases. Anybody that takes aspartame, it's a horrible thing. They have a plant called stevia. Mm -hmm. It's a natural plant. I use my mortar and pestle. I have some growing in my garden right now. It is 200 times stronger than regular white powdered sugar, than what white sugar. I will take a leaf or two, grind it up in my mortar and pestle. I will put it in teas. I will put it in hibiscus drink. A lot of people drink hibiscus drink. Love drinks that. Especially in the Mexican community. They call it Jamaica, and it's just oh. so delicious. I make my own, too, and I add the stevia because they and add the corn And you can put cinnamon syrup. sticks, and that's another health benefit. Yeah. There's so many things you can do, but you can grind up the stevia, or if you're going to make the hibiscus drink with the hibiscus flowers, mm -hmm. use the leaves. Use two or three leaves and put it in and just let it and if like, we don't like live, like, near the woods, where can we get these leaves? Do they sell them in the stores? You can go to any kind of floral, sh any kind of plant shop, Home Depot, Lowe's, anywhere that has oh. a garden section. Okay, and just you grow your own. Okay. And grow your own. I have it growing in my garden right now. And it's so easy to grow because we've been having, I know in California you have the droughts. Here, we it, the weather has been hot and humid and we need rain. Yeah. But that stevia grows like this. Okay, awesome. It just grows. It's and and just huge. another thing I want to add about sodas, even if it doesn't have aspartame, I mean, they ha it has coloring in it. It has chemicals in it. It has so, this so even uh, carbonation is not good for our system. The, any sodas or the regular mm -hmm. ones has sugar. It's just awful for your for your whole system and body. And if you can just get off it, you know, years ago I used I was never into sodas, but um, I used to take just grape juice with no sugar, you know, the pure grape juice, and then mix it with Perrier, and then you have like a grape soda that's natural, or if you have to have something, you know. Green tea, if you're worried about the caffeine, because I know some people drink soda in lieu of coffee, yeah. you can take green tea and make a cold tea that way, and put any, any there are so many things you can put in, you can put cinnamon in it, you can put lemon and lime in it, you can put the stevia in it, or not. I mean, it depends. Green tea, as much as it's not considered an herb, is another amazing tea to drink because it's good for your chest, it's good for bronchitis, it's good for energy. Green tea. What about chrysanthemum it's, tea? Chrysanthemums. I see like the Chinese drink the chrysanthemum tea. That's awesome. Well, ginseng. Uh -huh. Ginseng is another one, speaking of that. that now, I used to be on a medication called Provigil. For my fatigue for MS. I came off that and I use ginseng now. Mm. And it works amazing. It works amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, the, the, our healthcare system really pushes the, the pharmaceuticals. You know, it's, it's just all about money. <laughs> and I really, I am, you know, no, we're not doctors, but I agree that people can get off most medications if they will t treat their bodies yeah. right. And my husband and I, every time we watch TV, we don't watch TV very often. But when we do, it seems like every other commercial is for this drug and that drug and this oh, drug. Oh, yeah. And you wonder why there's so much. And, and it's like, and like I said, I, I, again, like you said, I'm not a doctor. And I would never tell anybody to come off their prescription drugs. But I know that since I have been using herbs, I used to be on five prescriptions. I'm only on two now. Mm -hmm. I, I've taken off the Provigil, the Nexium. Things like that. The next thing for your stomach, I use ginger tea now for that. Wonderful. Which is you get heartburn, stomach aches, things like that. I mean, there's so many, people don't realize they will walk. I have seen people just walk over 
things, your herbs, oh, like right. like yellow dock and, and St. John's wort and Queen Anne's lace and things like that. And I'm like, do you realize what you're doing? That is medicine. Oh, uh, that <laughs> Queen Anne's lace, is that that white flower that you dry? It's, it's what do you do with I remember, because I grew up in Washington State and uh, outside of Seattle, and we where I lived, it was not built up very much yet. So I spent my childhood playing in the woods, picking huckleberries, picking, you know, look at, I, I just that, loved yeah. it. And, and I really miss that. And we had that Queen Anne's lace. What do you do with that? I cook it. You can cook it in your foods. You can make salads with it. You can with grind the, it up. With the white flowers? With the flowers? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. You can use the leaves too, but I use the flower part. Oh, nice. I, but it's just, there's so many things, especially... I'm blessed to live in New England. We, I mean, in our woods, in our backyards, everywhere, there is just so much medicinal herbs that are out there. And pe pine trees, oh, pine needle tea, pine needles are amazing for your chest, for congestion, for if you've got a wicked bad sore throat or cold or, or um, your nose, mm -hmm. you make a tea out of that, it clears it up. Out of the pine needles, the tea. pine needles, you make a tea? Mm -hmm. So I can just take pine needles and then boil them just like I do with the nettle and just... As long as they're green. And the green. yellow ones don't work as well, but if they're green... Oh, I'm going up to visit my mom yeah. next month, so there's a lot of pine trees. Yeah. I'll just be picking the pine trees. And then I was taking this powder that was made of pine, uh, pine nuts, I think. Yes. Pine resin? I think so. Some pine powder resin, I was mixing yeah. it in my juices, and that was great. There's so much, and, and it can get so expensive. So if you can pick it yourself, this is great. You can even do an incense-type thing with the, with the pine mm -hmm. and breathe it in oh. to get, to get the, the vapors from it. So you can dry it and then burn it? Yeah. Oh, my and gosh. The, there's and too like much. I'm looking, don't mind me looking up. I'm in my kitchen, and we have a window right there. The entire backyard is pine, is pine trees. Oh, my the gosh. I just might be stopping over at your house one day. <laughs> Come on over. Come on over. <laughs> All right. Well, this we're going to leave it here because um, there's too much. We'll have to do a second video about this. Oh, there's so much. There's I could talk about this all day because we, the medicinal purposes in herbs is just amazing just amazing so you guys if you have any uh, remedies of your own leave it down in the comments we would love to hear them uh -huh. thanks brenda thank you take care everyone